over to Brother Fred. Okay. The title of the message tonight is Demolish Satan's Works. Uh, Satan has uh, come against uh, many of the people that are close to us, and, and we all need to be able to uh, demolish his works and set the people free that they've been Amen. bound up. Amen. Now, uh, it's easy to, to think about what Jesus did in uh, 1 John 3, 8, and that's the very core uh, verse for this message. And uh, in uh, most translations, it says that for this purpose, the Son of uh, God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. But when I got looking at that word, it, it is so much richer uh, than just the word uh, destroy. So I want Sherry to read it out of the Amplified Classic Version. Okay, First John 3, 8. The reason the Son of God was made manifest or made visible was to undo, destroy, loosen, and dissolve the works the devil had been doing. Okay, so... We, we, the word loose is in the scriptures a lot, uh, but I, I really picked up on something new this time as I was studying it, and it's the word dissolve. And dissolve is a legal word. And so what Jesus did, he came and he set many people free. So he loosed them from the bonds that the devil had put on them, but he did it in two ways. He did it legally and physically so that they were free and they could get up and they could walk around free from the attacks of the enemy. Now, the thing that's most important for you and I is that he legally did it for everybody. He physically freed uh, a few people in his lifetime uh, from the uh, enemy attacks, but what he did legally on the cross was to mm -hmm. free all of us. And, and so mm. when I saw the word dissolve, that's a legal word, dissolve a contract, make a con contract void. And so I looked up in the Vines Expository Dictionary, and I want Sherry to read uh, this concept. And, and the Greek word that uh, we're talking about tonight is luo, L-U-O. It's, it's just a short word, short Greek word, luo. And that's the word we get destroy from. It's the word we get loose from. And so that's what's going to be our focus tonight, that word. But here it is in the Vines Dictionary. Let's read these meaning of it. To loose, to dissolve, to sever, to break, to demolish. Hallelujah. Okay, so that's where I get the word demolish from. But it's also legal, all those legal words, to sever, mm -hmm. to dissolve, mm -hmm. uh, to make void. So yes. it's a very powerful word. And that's what Jesus, that was his purpose. That's the purpose was to destroy, demolish, sever, dissolve the works uh, of the devil. And uh, then I want to just give these couple of um, uh, meanings of that, of what we do. The fact that he came to... Uh, demolish the works of the devil, and one of the things is to dissolve. So I want you to read these two mm -hmm, meanings mm -hmm. down here. Okay. To dissolve or to void a contract or anything that is legally binding. To pronounce or to declare that something or someone is no longer bound. Okay. So it has two different reasons. But one is to dissolve a contract or make a contract void. And the other one is to pronounce that it's over with. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, so hallelujah. what we're really talking about then is Jesus came to give us a legal basis to demolish the works of the devil. Mm -hmm. and, and so we are here at this point in time, but we can go to the courts of heaven and, and proclaim uh, that uh, I, the law, the uh, contracts that have given the devil any right in any of our lives, that that is dissolved, it's made void, and pronounced that we are free from the works of the devil. And so now I want us to look at 1 John 3, 8 and put all of these meanings in it. And so I'll just ask Sherry to 
just slowly go over this, mm -hmm. but we're it's really we're looking at the legality of destroying the works of the devil. So read this. Okay. <clears throat> Jesus came to dissolve the legal hold Satan had over human beings to pronounce that we are no longer bound by him and his works to void the contract ending his dominion over us. Okay. Hallelujah. So, so where did he get any right? Uh, well, he stole it uh, at the in the Garden, the Garden of Eden. Eden. Uh, Adam was given authority, was delegated authority over the earth to take dominion over it, to take care of it. And when Adam sinned, then he had some type of legal right, that authority passed to uh, the devil. But I want you to remember that when Jesus rose from the dead, Hallelujah. he said, all authority, authority in heaven and earth is given unto me. Amen. So all authority. So where does all authority reside today? It all resides in Jesus Christ. So we're looking at this from a legal perspective. Who has the authority? Jesus does. What did he do with his authority? He delegated his authority to you and me. So we have authority then uh, in our lives and in the lives of uh, people around us to destroy, to demolish, to dissolve, to make void the contract, mm -hmm. anything that the devil's doing. So whatever you see the works. Now, what are the works of the devil? Well, we see this in John 10, 10. John 10, mm -hmm. 10 says the thief, and that's the devil, mm -hmm. comes to steal, kill, kill. and destroy. So uh, that's a pretty big umbrella of what he's going to do. And, and you might think, well, now, Jesus did the work on the cross, and he, the purpose that he came was to demolish the works of the devil. Why is the devil still running around on the earth causing problems? Well, because he is doing it illegally. Yes. Now, at some point in time in the past he may have done it legally but he has no legal right here but he's a thief he he's going to operate illegally mm -hmm. and he's going to keep going around so there are all kinds of thieves uh running around on the earth and, and there has to be some law uh brought to bear on them on, on, i'm just talking about in the natural if there's a thief if somebody breaks into your house uh, then that's a thief. You can report it to the police. The police can go get the, that person uh, when they find that person and take them to, mm -hmm. uh, to jail. And then eventually they'll go to court and they, it's all legal. You, they cannot steal. And, and just as a, an individual cannot come into your house, break into your house and steal without consequences, that doesn't mean they won't do it, but there will be consequences once they are uh, once it's turned over to the police, they are arrested, they're turned over to the courts, and then they're possibly even turned over to the prison. And I'll give you this example. Uh, I've taught uh, in recent times about justice. God is a God of justice. And, um, uh, and so you can expect justice, but you have to know how to approach him and ask for the justice. He's the judge of all. Jesus is mm -hmm. your lawyer. Holy Spirit is your lawyer and advocate. So you go there and in the courts of heaven, the blood of Jesus to, continues to cry out today. And so I taught that uh, and, and a woman, we recently met with a woman in another state. I had taught her about it. And so she had someone break into her house. She had a thief break into her house and uh, uh, and he stole some things. And one of the things he stole was a gun. And, and then he went out. And uh, she asked for justice. She approached the God of, uh, who is the judge of all and asked for justice. Well, she has her gun back. Hallelujah. But, but, but let me tell you how it happened. The police caught the man who had uh, stolen. Uh, he had actually used the gun in another uh, illegal act, 
Mm -hmm. uh, and he was caught and they got the gun and then the gun was used as evidence in a court case against him and he went to prison and the woman who lost the gun, the court sent it back to her. So she Hallelujah. did get justice Hallelujah. and the thief is locked up. Hallelujah. Well, it's the same thing. Oh, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Now we're, we're talking about not a natural thief, but a demonic uh, thief. And, and he does those same things, uh, just like uh, somebody broke into her house. Well, the devil, what might he do? Well, he, he could put sickness on you. He could, uh, mm -hmm. he could torment you. He could cause you to be anxious or fearful or oppressed or, or stressed any, out. Stressed out. So the devil can do those kinds of things and that's illegal for him to do it, but somebody has to stop him. Mm -hmm. And who is given authority? Well, Jesus has all authority, but you are his ambassador on the earth. You're his delegate on the earth he has given you authority so as he has all authority we see from matthew 28 18 then he delegated that authority to you in luke chapter 10 19. he said uh, i'll ask you to read luke 10 19 how uh, mm -hmm. jesus has given us authority amen amen over the devil behold i give unto you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So. Well, I'd like to say something okay. about dominion. Okay. If I can. And that is the, the, the Lord gave uh, Adam and Eve in the garden in, in Genesis chapter one, verse 26. He said, let, let us make them in our image, in our likeness, and then we're going to give them dominion. And I, I know uh, some of you might be in the uh, delivering uh, deliverance ministry. And I want to say this, that before you can bring forth a true deliverance for that person, you need to break the power that the enemy has had over them. And you do that with the dominion of God. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit, but that is, um, that's very crucial when you're uh, working and ministering with people who are um, in different kinds of situations uh, and bring deliverance to them, that we take their situation to the judge of all and we sever that any type of contract uh, that has gone on between them and the enemy. Yeah, sometimes they open the door, right? Let the enemy come in, and uh, <clears throat> and so that all has to be broken off of them. Uh, that's a real good point, Sherry. So right. what we see is that Jesus has all authority, but He's delegated authority to you. Now, where did he, we saw in Luke 10, 19, that he gave you authority over the power of the enemy, oh, yeah, over yeah. the power of the devil. Now, okay, but there are some other places he talked about this, and, and he used this same word, luo, Greek word luo, L-U-O, and that is in Matthew. He did it in Matthew 16, uh, 19, and I want Cherry to read uh, a couple of verses here. Uh, a couple of translations, Matthew 16, mm -hmm. 19. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose or luo on this earth will be loosed or luo in heaven. Okay. That's out of the New King James. Okay. Now read it out of the passion. Out of the passion. I will give you the keys of heaven's kingdom of the realm of the kingdom to forbid on earth that which is forbidden in heaven. Oh, hallelujah. And to release on earth that which is released in heaven. Okay. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So this is the keys. We're talking about keys of the kingdom. 
And uh, we, we also see it before I'll talk more about it. We can also see it again in Matthew 18, 18. And when Jesus taught in such a short span there about uh, this word luo, it means it. it's very important for us to understand this. Okay, so read it out of Matthew 18. 18, 18. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you <clears throat> loose or luo on this earth shall be loosed in heaven. Okay, so now we know that this is a legal term. It means dissolve a contract, to make void a contract. Uh, to so, sever it. To sever it. So uh, whatever the devil has done to you or done to your family, uh, whatever he's done, and we'll go over those again, what he might have done, and he's done a lot. Uh, and he has no legal right to it, but you have to loose, uh, loose it. But it's been loosed first in heaven, or in other words, it's been, if there's been uh, something released in heaven, you can release it on earth. That is a legal responsibility. So he's given you the keys of binding and loosing, and that's all about le legal issues, dissolve, mm -hmm. to make void a contract. And so if, well, let's just think about what Jesus did. He, he came to a woman in the synagogue one, one time in uh, Luke uh, 13, and uh, he said, Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, be loosed? Mm -hmm. oh, hallelujah. So here he's demonstrating his uh, freeing people Amen. from the works of the devil. He said the devil had her bound over for 18 years. years. But he said, ought not this woman, a daughter, daughter of, of Abraham. Abraham. He's making a legal argument here. He's saying, here, here's the covenant. This is her covenant right. It's because she's a daughter of Abraham. And Abraham had a covenant with God. And so this, he, what he's doing is establishing her covenant right to be free from the uh, Satan's works. Amen. And, and so read this verse, Sherry. Okay. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years, be loosed okay. from this bond on the Sabbath day. And so what he was doing is he was saying, this is a legal situation. And he is speaking that this woman is loosed from this, this bond that the enemy has put upon her now right now god is loosing you god is loosing you from any pain in your body god is loosing you from any uh stress that has come upon you uh the god is releasing uh any any type of of anxiety yes, any baby. type of worry yes. any type of fear he is loosing it yes. right now Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because there's no pain in heaven. And so I call healing down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let it flow through your body right now. Hallelujah. There's one person you got up with pain in your body this morning. Oh, hallelujah. And then in your muscles, I felt stiff. And, and, and right now, God is loosing. He's loosing your body in Jesus' name, just like he did with this woman. Because not only do we have Abraham's covenant, we have the blood covenant. Yes. Through Jesus Christ. A better covenant. A better co covenant with better promises. Better promises. Hallelujah. 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 So we're, we saw Jesus having authority, demonstrating that he's destroying the works of the devil. And now... Sherry's uh, doing it right here, destroying the works. That's legally and demolishing, physically. Demolishing. Demolishing the works of the devil in your life. Hallelujah. And it doesn't stop there because you 
can demolish the works of the devil in your life. Amen. So we're Amen. Laying, we're going through this very slowly, very to keep it simple, so that you can turn and loose yourself and loose your family members from the works of the devil. Or loose those that come to you. Uh, oh, and yeah. I know that some of you have been ministering this week. And and so that's, you know, the, the binding and the loosing is, is what God has given to us to help minister to other people. Hallelujah. 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 You know, I, I want to say this. When I get, um, when the enemy tries to discourage me, uh, and I told my grandson this the uh, just recently. Um, I watch um, the little movie Alice in Wonderland, uh, and it's it's the one with uh, it's the the newest one. And I watch the part where she puts on the armor, and she has her sword in her hand, and she chops off the head of the Jabberwocky. And I get so excited when I watch that part. And I, I'm, I get encouraged and I get strengthened, you know, in my faith, you know, because in the in Revelations, the devil is called the dragon. And so um, it is the old dragon. And, and she chops that head off. And that head rolls down the, the stairs. And and I and there's victory there. There's victory. You know, first she puts on the armor. Well, first she finds out who she is in Christ Jesus. Secondly, she puts on the armor. Then she gets the sword. Hallelujah. And then she chops off the head of the Jabberwocky. <laughs> and and I get I get very excited. Yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> Even then. And so that's what we're teaching you how to do tonight. How to stop the works of the day. Amen. How to Amen. demolish what Amen. he's done. What he's done in your life, in your family's life, in the life of the other people around you. God has given you authority. Jesus has, has all authority in heaven and earth. And he has delegated authority oh, to hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. To hallelujah. destroy, demolish, dissolve. <laughs> hallelujah. Make void the mm, contracts mm, mm. of the works of the day. Amen. 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 This is really exciting. So Hallelujah. I, I want us to think for a moment about um, prayer. And, and so what do we do in prayer? You know, so many people uh, go to uh, prayer and they spend a lot of their time, prayer time, in telling God what their problem is and trying to get him to change, to do something about it. And there's really two important points I want to make. Is first, you do not have to inform God of anything. He knows everything. everything. And secondly, you don't have to change his attitude and change his position so that he comes and acts on your behalf. Amen. See, that re that's really just negating the work of the cross because Jesus said, it is finished. The work of the cross is finished. We, we need to get that into our thinking. The work of the cross is finished. So we don't need to tell God we have problems. We, we don't need uh, to inform him what the problem is, how big it is. Oh, hallelujah. We need to be thinking about how big our God is. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and we don't need to try to persuade God mm -hmm. to come and do something. He's not going to do something. Yeah. All authority has been given to Woo! Jesus. Hallelujah. And he has given you authority to destroy, demolish, dissolve, uh, make void any mm -hmm. contracts, the works of the devil. So Hallelujah. let's just look at these verses now that God knows everything. Okay, so. Well, and let's, let's go back just for a second. And we talk about prayer. What does, what does prayer really do our prayers they give a voice to god they give a voice to god in the earth you know god is the spirit he is uh, the the father of spirits and so 
when we pray, we need to remember what we're, what we're praying. We're giving God a voice in in the earth, in our earth, because we're earthen vessels, but also in the earth in general, all over the earth. We're we're that's what our prayer does, and that's when they're effective. Okay. So oh, first yeah. of all, we don't need to inform God because He knows everything. So let's just look at a few verses here. Okay, in Job 37, 16, do you know how the clouds are balanced? Those wondrous works of him who is perfect in knowledge. God is perfect in knowledge. God is perfect in knowledge. Okay. He knows everything. He knows everything. You don't have to inform Even him. Even before you ask him, he knows you have a need. Okay. Hallelujah. So. 1 John 8, 39. Then here in heaven, your dwelling place, and forgive and act and give to everyone according to all his ways, whose heart you know. For you alone know the hearts of all of the people. You know all the heart of all of the people. He knows what's going on in your heart. He knows you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, one more thing. First John 3 20. <clears throat> For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things okay he knows all things hallelujah okay so again there has to be some other reason to pray rather than just inform god now i'm not saying don't inform him but there has to be a bigger reason because he already knows everything another thing he's not going to change hallelujah and, and so you cannot persuade him to do something because he is not going to change. Let's just look at these verses. Malachi 3, 6. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Hallelujah. In Psalms 102, verse 27. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. And then, of course, Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay. So if we do not need to inform him of our problem, and we do not need to persuade him to do something about our problem, then there has to be a different reason to have prayer. And that is we go into his presence. We mm -hmm. have a dialogue with him, but it's not to inform him of something he doesn't know uh, or to remind him of something he doesn't know or to persuade him to do something because he's already done everything. He sent Jesus to the cross. So what are, what's the purpose of prayer then? It's to go in there and, and to dialogue with him and to set our hearts like him, to be like him. When you encounter God, then you're the one that changes. And, and so if you, uh, go to, if you go to prayer and, and you complain, yeah, and you just take that time of complaining and then you come away and you haven't changed, then, then there hasn't been any uh, thing done successfully mm -hmm. in prayer time. The prayer time is for us to dialogue with him, find out his mind and for us to change uh, so that we'll be more like him and we'll be in line with him. We want to align ourselves mm -hmm. with him and begin to speak what he says what he wants us to say. Mm -hmm. And so that's where Sherry said, we give him a voice, but, but we don't give him the voice uh, of our heart. We have to find out his heart. His heart. And, and then we align ourselves with him because in, as we encounter him, we're changed. He's not going to change. He will be the same forever. He's not going to change. We can't persuade him to do something. And so what we do, we find out what's in his heart. We begin to pour out his heart on the earth. Oh, and hallelujah. We, and, and that is mm. getting us cooperating with him and co-laboring with him because he wants the family of God operating effectively on the earth. And they're not going to do that outside of him, uh, isolated from him. We can only do that in cooperation with him, co-laboring with him. We have to first find his heart and then come in alignment with his heart and what his thinking is. And then we begin to proclaim 
will pronounce uh, what he's telling us to pronounce, what's coming out of his heart, mm. and that's going to change things. Yes, amen. Now, you just make a natural proclamation. You're not going to change things. But you come into his presence, uh, you find out what's in his heart, and, and you begin, and you turn, and you proclaim that on the earth, and things will change because that's his word, and that's his living word for the moment. That's the his word for the season Amen. and for the time. Amen. And it will have power to bring itself to pass. That's what Luke 137 says. No word of God is void of power. Hallelujah. It carries Hallelujah. enough power to bring itself about. But this natural words don't change things on the earth. What's going to change things on the earth is that we get so close to him we encounter God, we find out his heart, we align ourselves with his heart, and then we begin to proclaim what he's telling us by his spirit and proclaim those words on the earth, and that will change things. That will change your body. It will change your relationships. Amen. It will change uh, people from having fear or anxiety or worry. It will set them all free. So Hallelujah. these are simple things that we all need to know how to do. And the basic core verse for this pass for this message is 1 John 3, 8. This is the purpose that Jesus came on the earth, and that was to demolish the works of the devil. Amen. And so if that's his purpose for coming, mm -hmm. what is your purpose? Well, we're following in his footsteps. We're being conformed to his image. We're being changed from glory to glory into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that we can begin to operate like he operated when he was on the earth. Uh, the picture of what we saw in uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, of him operating and healing people and setting the uh, demonized people free, delivering them. All of that was to give us examples of how we can operate on the earth in Amen. this present age. Uh, uh, things are still Amen. happening and they're happening now, but there's a way that things happen and there are ways that uh, the works of the devil are demolished. And that's what this message is about. So that you Ooh, can hallelujah. demolish the works of the devil just like Jesus did. You follow in his footsteps. And first of all, you legally uh, demolish those works and then you see them physically uh, demolished. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now, there are a couple of uh, verses we want to end with. And, and one is something that happened in uh, in Daniel uh, chapter 3. And they, they, they tied up some men. They tied up three men, mm -hmm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They tied them up and they threw mm -hmm. them in the fire because they would not bow the knee mm -hmm. uh, uh, to a golden image. They would not bow the knee to the devil. And they bound them up and they threw them in the fire. And let's just see what uh, Nebuchadnezzar saw. Mm -hmm. And the king said, did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, true, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loosed. Luo, it's the same word walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt and the fourth looks like the son of god now this king had never seen the son of god but our god is mighty Hallelujah. and he showed that king this is my son jesus christ and he and came, he, he came to, whoo, to, free. To, to free these men yes. to loose them and to demolish the works of the devil. And that's why he Hallelujah. for your life too. Same Amen. Thing. Amen. And then the final thing I want to talk about is Isaiah 58, 6. And this is the passage. Isaiah 58 is the passage that God gave Sherry and me for well, our ministry. The whole chapter. <clears throat> for, uh, for our ministry. And, but I want to focus on the sixth verse uh, because this is for all of us. This is for all of us. He okay. said, "Is not this the fast that I have chosen?" Let's yeah, see. I'm gonna I'm gonna read the scripture in just a moment. But some people fast so that 
they can persuade God. persuade God to change the situation. But that's not why we fast. Number one, we fast so that we are moved. We are changed. We are touched by the spirit of God. And then in Isaiah 58, 6, it says, is this not the fast that I have chosen? Now, this is God speaking to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break or you sever or you dissolve every yoke. Hallelujah. Now, if you really want to fast, this, this is, is what you're supposed to be yeah. doing right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Going without bread and water is, is nothing. It does nothing except possibly change you, your attitude, your thinking. It could do that. But this is the fast that God has chosen right here. And when we are, that's our purpose. That is our purpose. Now, I want to talk just a moment, and then I'm going to open up the floor for your comments. I want to talk about dominion, and I started a few few moments ago. But in, I'm going to go back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, where it says, God says, let us make man in our image, plural. So, and then he said, and then we're going to give them dominion. Okay, so if you really want dominion, then you need to be in the likeness of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. If you really want dominion over sickness, you want dominion over depression, you want dominion over fear, you want dominion over poverty or lack, then these are the, you're made in the image of the Father. And who is the Father? He's love. God is love. So we're, we're going to uh, walk in love. Everything that we do, we're going to love. We're going to love our enemies. We're going to, to all the gifts work by love. All of the, the, the spiritual uh, things work by love. Faith worketh by love. Hallelujah. So in his likeness now, so the Father, we're going to walk in, in the Father and that he's love. Then we're going to walk in the word. And who is the word? It's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, that's who's within us, the word. We walk in the love of the Father. We walk in the word, which is Jesus Christ. And then we walk in his power. And that is the Holy Ghost. So if you want dominion, and if you want to dissolve the works of the devil, then you need to walk in who you are. You're like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 And that's, that's what I want. I want to walk more in his love. And right now, if you want more of his love, just raise your hands. Hallelujah. Father, we want more of your love, yes. more of your compassion. Lord, let it just go deep inside of us. We ask for it <clears throat> and we receive more of your love right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And then just keep them up. Uh, Father, we need more of your word. We want to walk more in your word. Hallelujah. We want to walk in you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We want to be just like you. Yes, we Lord. want to do things just like you do them. Yes, Hallelujah. We want to do the greater things in Jesus' name. And now, Father, we ask for more of the Holy Ghost. More. More, more, more of the Holy Spirit, yes, more Lord. of your power, Lord. Uh, let it fall upon us. Let it uh, just surge through us. The energy of God, let it surge through you in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you. Yes, we thank you for dominion. <clears throat> and we thank you that the works of the devil are demolished in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One thing the Lord said to me also at 2.30 when I was awake this morning was 
If you want things to change, then you need to speak differently than you're speaking. Because the power of life and death are in your tongue. That's what it says in Proverbs. Life and death Amen. are in the power of your tongue. And if you want any situation changed in your in your in your in your job situation, in your family, in your in yourself, uh, in your finances, uh, whatever it might be that you need changed, then you need to change the way you're speaking.